Welcome back. An icon is a pictogram or ideogram displayed on a computer screen in order to help the user navigate a computer system or mobile device. They commonly take two forms. The first is a shortcut that allows you to run or launch an application. The second is a representation of a file such as a picture or document. Let's take a look at what some of these look like on Windows. First, we have shortcuts to Microsoft Office applications. If you have Office installed on your machine, you have probably seen and used these. The thing to remember here is that these are just shortcuts, they are not the programs themselves. The best analogy I can think of here is ordering a takeaway. A shortcut is ordering food for delivery, as opposed to going and getting it yourself. You can tell these are shortcuts by the little blue arrow in the bottom right corner. Another example of a shortcut here is the File Explorer. Double clicking this icon will launch the File Explorer program, which is used to manage the computer's filing system. The next two icons are folders. They are not shortcuts. Note there are no blue arrows. They are the folders themselves. The first shows an empty folder. The second folder has a few files in it. Double clicking on either will display the full contents of the folder. Within the folder, we may find some icons looking like these. They are two Office documents. The first is a Word document, and the second an Excel spreadsheet. Windows tries to be as helpful as possible by indicating what type of file it is. A picture may show a preview of the actual picture, or a video clip may show the first frame from the video. Here it shows the type of file. You can have shortcuts to files as well as programs. Here I've created two shortcuts to the files above. Again, we can tell that they are shortcuts from the blue arrow in the corner. Remember, if I delete the shortcut, it doesn't delete the file itself. Let's take a look at these various icons on the computer now. On the left, I've created shortcuts to a few of the Microsoft Office applications. Double clicking on these, that's moving the mouse so that the pointer is over one of the icons and tapping the left mouse button twice in quick succession will launch the application. Click the cross in the top right to close it once again. Shortcuts can also be found on the Start menu. Click the Windows logo in the bottom left, scroll through the list to find the Office application you want to load, and click on it. Only a single click is needed in the Start menu. Remember, these are only shortcuts, not the programs themselves. If I delete one of these, by clicking on it to highlight it, then pressing the delete button on the keyboard, it doesn't remove the program, just the shortcut. In this case, I can still find Word by going through the Start menu. Alternatively, to delete an icon, I can move the mouse so that the pointer is over it and click the right mouse button. From the pop-up list, I can select Delete to remove it. The next icon is for File Explorer. This is used to manage the files and folders stored on the computer. This is usually what you will use to find files and folders. The display is split into two. The left displays a tree view, and the right displays the contents of any folder that has been selected from the left. So if I click on Documents, for example, I see all the documents on the system listed on the right. Clicking Pictures, Music or Video will display the contents of these folders. Clicking on the little chevron sign next to a folder will show a list of subfolders. For example, if I click on the chevron next to local disk C, this being the main storage area of the computer, I see a list of folders contained within. I won't delve too much deeper as this particular area contains essential programs required for the computer to operate. But clicking on the chevron next to the documents or pictures will show any subfolders that have been created in these folders. It's possible to create folders in folders in folders, and so on and so on. Click on the X in the top right to close the File Explorer. Next, we have two icons, the first representing an empty folder, the second a folder containing a few files. No blue arrow, so these aren't shortcuts, they are the folders themselves. I've created two shortcuts next to each. Note, the only difference is the blue arrow. Double-clicking on either the folder itself or the shortcut has the same effect. 
The contents of the folder are displayed using File Explorer to display the contents. Let me show you the difference between deleting a shortcut and the actual folder. First, I select one of the shortcuts and press the Delete key. I can still access the folder by double clicking on the folder itself. But if I delete the My Empty Folder folder, again by clicking on it and pressing the Delete button on the keyboard, now, if I try using the shortcut to access the folder, it tells me I can't find the folder. On the right, I have a couple of files, and below, a couple of shortcuts to the files. The icons try to give you a hint to the type of file. So on the left is a Word document. This might be a letter or the next best-selling novel. On the right is an Excel file. This could be a budget or an inventory list. Below these are the shortcuts to the files. Again, identified by the blue arrow in the corner. Remember, deleting the shortcut won't remove the file itself. And if you delete the file, the shortcut will stop working. In this example, let's take a look at how to create shortcuts. Here, I have a couple of files stored in my Documents folder. Rather than opening up the folder every time I want to open the file, I can create a shortcut on the desktop giving me quick access to it. To create a shortcut, hover the mouse over the file and click the right mouse button. From the menu, select Create Shortcut. Note that the shortcut is given the same name as the file, with Shortcut on the end. Now, there are a couple of ways to move this to the desktop. The first, and easiest if I can still see some of the desktop, is to once again move the mouse over the shortcut icon, click and hold the mouse button down, now, while still holding the mouse button, move the icon across the desktop. Once you're over the desktop, release the mouse button. Now, if I close File Explorer so that I just have the desktop visible, I can quickly access the file by double-clicking on the shortcut. The other way of creating a shortcut on the desktop is by using the Cut and Paste commands. If I open File Explorer once again and navigate to the Documents folder, I create a shortcut in the same way, this time to the second file. This time, rather than clicking and dragging the file, I will move my mouse over the shortcut icon again, but now I'll click the right mouse button and select Cut. Notice that the shortcut icon now appears greyed out. It looks lighter than the other icons. This indicates that it has been cut and is ready to be moved. It's actually moved the shortcut to an area called the clipboard. Now, I can close the File Explorer and right-click on the area of the desktop that I want to place the shortcut. Select Paste. I can now double-click the shortcut to open the file. Shortcuts can also be created to folders. Let's open File Explorer one more time, navigate to the Documents folder. I've created a couple of folders. I can create shortcuts to these in exactly the same way. Right-click on the folder and select Create Shortcut. I can move it to the desktop I'll drag this one across the desktop. Now that I've created the shortcut, I can close File Explorer, to access the folder again, I just double click the shortcut. As I showed you in the slides section of this lesson, we can have shortcuts to applications as well. The normal way to access applications is through the Start menu. However, if there is a program that you use regularly, you can create a shortcut on the desktop to give you quick access to it. First, find the application that you want a shortcut for in the Start menu. Click and hold the left mouse button down. While holding the mouse button, drag the icon across to the desktop and release the mouse button. This has created the shortcut. I can now use the same dragging technique to move it to wherever I want it. Click and hold the mouse button, move the mouse, and you'll be dragging the icon. Just to release the mouse button to drop the icon in place. In this lecture, we have taken a detailed look at icons We've identified various types for applications, files and folders and shortcuts. We've selected icons and moved them around. We've created, moved and deleted shortcuts. Thanks for watching. See you in the next video.